Hi everyone and welcome back to Faraday Academy. In this video I want to go over some of the different types of developer jobs you will see in the industry, the most common ones, and also the types of companies where you will find these jobs. I'm going to start with the three main types of employment. Now if you're just getting into coding, especially if you're a self-learner, you're probably going to have a very difficult time finding that first developer job at a company. So a lot of people do start with this first type of job, which is freelancing, because it gives you a way to get real world experience and build a portfolio. And on top of that, you learn how to market your skills and sell yourself, which is pretty much what you have to do when you interview at companies anyway. Of course, for most people, I don't recommend staying in freelancing as a junior developer because you're going to learn so much more if you can get hired on by a company, if you can learn from their internal team and work on really professional projects with other developers. But this is a great way to get your foot in the door and start your career off, whether you're selling your services to local businesses or you're selling on a site like Upwork or freelancer.com. But for most people, from what I've seen, this type of freelancing is very temporary. Now, more often, if people aren't hired on full-time by a company, they'll take contract work where a company needs something very specific done and they might hire you on for three, six, or even 12 months. A lot of times you see junior developer positions that will say contract to hire. So meaning they just wanna try you out as a temporary employee so they're not having to file all the paperwork and give you the benefits of being a full-time employee. They're just gonna pay you straight salary with no benefits as a contractor. And then if they like you, they may or may not hire you on. I would say for junior devs, contracting is definitely one step up from freelancing. It's also more stable as you have a regular job every day and you know you're getting a paycheck, but there isn't much job security at all with contracting, even less so than with at-will employment as a full-time employee. Now the next type is of course the internal employee. When a company hires you on their payroll full-time and you get salary and benefits and a little bit more job security because it is harder to fire a full-time employee. If it's a medium size or a larger company, there will be a series of steps that the company will have to go through before they could let you go. Usually that's giving you warnings for performance or something along those lines. And that's usually the main goal when you're learning to code. You want to be hired on as an internal employee, but a lot of times you'll have to get there by taking on some freelance and contract work. And that brings me to the types of companies that you can work at as a new developer. So first of all, I want to start with a small local company. Now I'm differentiate this from startups, which I'll get to in a second. So a small local company may or may not have private investment, but usually they'll just have a couple partners or someone who just started their own company and wants to make a living off of it but it's very hit or miss in terms of how they value their technical employees. Let me explain. So if they are specifically a tech company, meaning that's what they build is just software, then you will probably be working with senior developers in a regular work environment with usually a good work-life balance. These small companies usually have less than 20 employees. However, if they're not a tech company specifically, let's say they sell gardening tools and they just need someone to run their website, then you will probably be one, not paid that well. And two, there won't be much room for you to grow at all. So this will be a very temporary position for you, but it can still be a great way to get into the industry. So now let's talk about startups. So startups is usually referring to the culture. It's usually a smaller company at most about a hundred people maybe, and usually a lot less than that. Now these companies have usually received venture funding and are trying to grow very quickly to appease their shareholders. This means that they want to hire people who can hit the ground running and usually don't have that much time for handholding, mentorship, or just generally being patient with someone who's new to development. This also usually means there is not a good work-life balance. In fact, I've seen many startup companies that say outright in their job postings, that we work hard and we expect you to be able to work long hours because we're trying to grow basically. 
So these roles are great for some people, but I don't think they're good for a lot of junior developers who maybe need some mentorship or if you have kids or something and you need that extra work-life balance. Now on the other side, you do get benefits like equity and coming in early in the company. So maybe you get stock options and opportunities for advancement. So if the startup's really in an industry that you're in love with and you love the people and stuff, maybe it's a good idea. But I think overall, most junior developers are gonna have a hard time working at a startup because of the fast pace of development and the amount of work it's gonna take for them to get up to speed. So if you haven't heard my story, my first two companies that I worked for were actually small companies that were locally owned. And I think that was a very good decision for me because I got to learn from a lot of senior developers while we weren't in this hectic startup environment where we had to work 12 hours a day and be stressed all the time. I felt like it was very relaxed and it was an environment where I got to try lots of things because I got to wear many different hats in a smaller company. I got to work in several different languages. I got to dabble in some Salesforce development, do some cloud development, a lot of AWS stuff. So I got exposure to a lot of things that I might not have gotten at a larger company. Now, mid-sized companies that are usually maybe like 200 to 1,000 employees, these are usually the most stable companies, especially if they've been around for at least a decade or two. Some of them have been around much longer. So you'd find a few different kinds of companies in the stable mid-size range. You have the, the people who have graduated from being a startup and they're still trying to grow and kind of transition into the area of being a large company and going public eventually. And then you have a stable group of mid-sized companies who fall into two categories. So you have tech companies and then you have other companies, maybe finance or healthcare or something else who have a tech department. Now for any company that is not a tech company, a lot of times you'll find that tech workers are undervalued and it's not the same culture that you see when you see these videos day in the life of a developer. It's not like that at all. A lot of times you have to dress up to go to work, even if you're not client facing, just because the rest of the company has a certain dress code you won't get as much flexibility or as many benefits usually as you would if you worked at a tech company. Now, most of the jobs that I've seen in the US anyway for mid-sized tech companies are actually consulting companies. So what they do is hire a bunch of full-time developers that work full-time for them, but they'll get projects from other companies and build them internally. So it's basically outsourcing. You will work for the consulting company, have a whole team of developers around you who also work at the consulting company, and then you'll have one or two senior team members who will be liaisons between your team at the consulting company and whatever client company to keep up to date on whatever particular project you're building for the client. There's also a second type of work that you might be doing if you get hired at a consulting company, and that is staff augmentation. So basically, other companies, especially larger companies, don't have enough developers. So they'll go to these consulting agencies and say, hey, we want to contract one of your developers for anywhere from six to 24 months to come into our office, work on our team, but they'll be under the consulting company's payroll still. I've actually done staff augmentation before and I was hired at the consulting company and I took the job because I really loved the other consultants at the company. It was a great company to work for, but the project that I was initially supposed to be a part of at the beginning fell through. So I was waiting and waiting for a project. And finally they had me go interview at one of their client companies for a staff augmentation position. And long story short, I was hired on at the client company. It wasn't at all the same culture that I had interviewed at, at the consulting company. So I basically had to go to the client that my employer wanted me to work for and work under their rules as kind of a contractor. So I was just there for a year and it's kind of a weird feeling because you're not really part of the team and you're not an internal employee at the client company so you can't do a lot of things. Like I wasn't allowed to use the gym, participate in classes or even shoot basketballs in the basketball hoop outside because it was a liability. 
Also, if everyone else on the team I was working with got to go home early or take a break someday, as a consultant, I had to bill for 40 hours for the week. So I had to stay every single day. I could never go home early unless I was taking a vacation or I specifically requested hours off. So just me personally, I really didn't like the feeling of not being part of a team. Even though I had taken a great job at this consulting agency and they were really good to me and there were a lot of smart, great people there, I ended up leaving and not liking it because of the staff augmentation portion. I wasn't a big fan of staff augmentation, but as you're looking for jobs, you'll probably find a lot of these consulting agencies. And a lot of times they are more prone to hiring junior developers, depending on what kind of projects they get. So be sure to ask them if you're working internally on applications or what clients you could possibly be sent to work for if you do end up working for them. I think that's important to understand before you start. One more thing about clients that I want to mention is if you are working for a consulting company and you end up doing staff augmentation, you're going to the client usually by yourself. You're driving there every day, the same as the rest of their internal employees. And because you're a consultant or your your name says consultant, they think you're an expert. They really think you're on top of your game and know what you're doing. So you really have to be professional. You won't have as much mentorship or help opportunities as you would if you were just working on a project internally at the consulting company itself. So now large companies, large corporations. I would put these in the category of having thousands of employees, usually multiple headquarters, companies like Salesforce, Google, Facebook, and other tech companies. And then other types of non-tech companies like Eli Lilly, Deloitte, and those types of places. To get your first job at a large tech company as a junior developer is incredibly, incredibly difficult because not only are you going through many rounds of screening usually, you're also competing with all of the employees that they're bringing in on visas. So they bring in top talent from, you know, India and other places around the world. And then they're also giving good packages and stable jobs to local developers. So. In my experience, it's very difficult to get a job at a large tech company starting out. It's not impossible, but you definitely have to have good experience on your resume, such as maybe freelancing work you've done, conferences you've spoken at, an online presence where you're maybe known for something. You have a blog where you break down Android development or something like that. And you also need to have your interview skills down you need to be good at your algorithms and all of those types of things. Now for non-tech large companies, it's a bit easier to get in, but again, you won't get the same benefits and perks that you would for a tech company or quite the same name recognition, but still might not be a bad place to work. You just have to look at each company individually. Another thing about big companies in general is that you're kind of like this tiny speck of dust, like a cog in this big machinery of how the company works. So a lot of times you don't have autonomy to make decisions and you won't even have visibility into all the different pieces that make up the company. So a lot of people after a few years in these types of roles tend to go more towards startups because they like autonomy and they want to be able to make decisions for themselves again, especially as you get more experience and you feel like you're able to make these technical decisions. Another thing I've seen at large companies is what you interview for and are hired for is not necessarily what you are going to be doing. For example, I've known people who went to work for Salesforce who interviewed for this one technology that they had experience in and then they got put on an entirely different team doing something they really didn't want to be doing and they were stuck there for a year without being able to switch to another team. Another person I knew at a larger company ended up getting put on a project where she really didn't get to code at all. It was mostly a drag and drop interface and she really just got bored and burned out from it. So you really have to make sure you know what you're getting into. You ask a lot of questions about what kind of projects you're gonna be on and that sort of thing. So the final type of employer that I'm gonna talk about is the government. Now I'm only familiar somewhat with the US government, so I'm not sure if it works this way everywhere. 
but the government does hire two different types of people in technical roles. They, of course, hire full-time internal employees and they hire a lot of contractors, especially when they need something temporary built. So if you do work for the government, it has a lot of perks. Usually you get good benefits. You probably won't get as high of a salary as if you go and work for a tech company, but you usually get stable employment, good benefits, a pension, and it's good if you're looking for the long term. However, they do look at your record and usually from what I've heard, they look at your extensive history. So if you're going for a government job, it would probably behoove you to go and clean up your old MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you have on yourself in the past, go and clean that up. Yeah, so these are all the different types of jobs and companies that you'll probably find. If you have any questions about getting your first developer job or you have anything to add to what I said here, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, consider supporting my channel by purchasing my book about learning to code, signing up for my Patreon, or just liking, commenting, and subscribing because engagement really does help my channel. Thank you and have a great day.